Um, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, Vitaltas, uh, he, he he pointed to to the logistics. I couldn't get that. Uh, I'm 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 from Sweden, uh, so uh, and and he pointed with the red arrow to it, and then I was listening, and then he started waving and started talking about everything. I was like, did you say all about that about me or just my name? I didn't get that. Just your name. Just to my name. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, it is. Okay, anyway, um, so I'm 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 from Sweden. I'm working for a company called Adform. Um, it is by far not the first time in Lithuania. I'm here every second week, and I've been doing that for two, three years now. Uh, Vidas is also somewhere behind. The, I know a few of, uh, of you here. Um, always enjoying a lot to be here. But it's the first time in Kaunas. Uh, and um, uh, I sense there is a little bit of a difference. I asked in the office uh, here which one is the bas best basketball team, Kaunas or, or Vilnius. Uh, and it started a debate between, it was quite a, I didn't, I just wanted to ask, so apparently there is a, a lot of basketball. Um, and then I asked how many NBA players there are in, in Lithuania playing in, 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 in NBA, and, and he couldn't answer. We got one in Sweden, so it's a big thing for us. Uh, so there it is. Just wanted to check a little bit, uh, how many are students in here, would you say your your students? Yeah? And, and uh, how many of you in here are, are working in, in kind of your own software, small little business? There is your, that's small, yeah. And the rest working in little bigger companies maybe? Anyone from IBM? I always need to ask that. I'm an old IBMer myself, so I, 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 in, before I start criticizing me, IBM too much. No IBMer, good. <laughs> uh, good. Any Americans in here? Anyone? No. No Americans? No. Any foreigners at all? No? Only Lithuanian? Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Uh, uh, there it is. Um, I, I am uh, I'm a software developer myself, but I, I will just see if this works. See? It does. Yeah. Um, so here I am. Uh, and, and I want to talk about the strategy uh, of no strategy uh, is the best strategy. Um, Any one of you that were in the login conference? You were, you were. Did you, did you visit the presentation I did there? No, good. So no one heard this before. <laughs> because I can't really recall what I said, so then it's always good. So no one has, no one has heard me, seen me before, so this is a, a fresh new uh, experience, right? Good, yeah. Um, I have a, a slide deck, but as you can hear, sometimes I go a little bit off track, uh, uh, but it's just improvisation as it's called. Uh, so anyway, I would claim, uh, and, and I am uh, uh, an old, uh, uh, not that old, but I've I'm I'm, I'm been doing some programming myself uh, back in the good old days uh, where we did uh, Turbo Pascal and Small Talk. Uh, students, you don't know what that is, but uh, some of the guys that are maybe a little bit older, uh, Turbo Pascal was really fancy because you could do menus in there and graphics instead of DOS, DOS prompts. And Smalltalk was one of the first and purely the object-oriented uh, language. And what's also quite, let's see here, this one, uh, that. This is a uh, classic waterfall method uh, and I will get back to that a little bit later in my presentation, um, where you start in one end and you end up uh, very much later in, in the bottom, if you're lucky, uh, to compare to and be referenced to the Agile method. So I will talk a little bit about the general things about strategy or no strategy in general by making breakthrough ideas. Uh, then I will tie it up a little bit and, and, uh, and connect it to the Agile. Yeah. So, uh, let's see here. I have my notes on, uh, on this little thing. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I'll make it a little bit bigger, like that. Okay. So, um, uh, this is also tied up to waterfall methods and a software development life cycle. That was the hot topic uh, uh, back in, uh, well, 20 years ago or something like that, when I was active. And I actually found this. This is, this is old. How many of you seen this joke before? Oh, it wasn't that old. Okay. 
it is an old joke. I had it on my door that I worked for IBM as a software developer. Uh, and I think it's quite descriptive for the software development life cycle that we did back then. Waterfall method. This is what's happened. And I really like the one, how the customer was built. That's, uh, that's, that's what the, we charged for it. And, and how, the, how the project was documented over here. Uh, so, and, and how it was supported also. We basically don't support that. Uh, and all they needed was this. Yeah, I mean, it's still a valid thing, but back then it was really valid. Because in this waterfall method, which again, I will get back to a little bit later, that this was the problem. This was not only a joke, it described the, 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 the matter of the fact. Uh, welcome. Uh, there are seats down here, I think. This one is a little bit in the way. I want, what, what's your name in the pink shirt there? Aivoras. Yeah. You're, you're, you're kind of, now you're gone. Now, you can't see me all the time. Oh, you can see me. Okay. You can hear me. Yeah. Are you listening also? Yeah. Good. I will pick on someone. I will get back to you. Okay. So stay, stay sharp. Oh. Welcome. Oh, some girls. Yeah. Good. Oh, welcome. Good. You seated? Okay. Yeah. Good. I'm Matt's person. I've started. So it's, it's okay. Anyway. The best strategy. Uh, and I mean... Now we're talking about creating breakthrough ideas. Um, a matter of these listening to these guys that have break it through. They are trillions of millions of dollars they've earned. All these successes that we are uh, passionate about reading about. Uh, we love to hear them, those stories. And, and in that, just to try to get new things, breakthrough ideas in a large scale or in a small scale. Um, and this is something over my years that this is something that has been, of course, fascinating. Of course, something you always try to strive for. Uh, and uh, lately, I would say, coming into some insights that all these things with planning, uh, strategy, uh, all the execution of that, and it hasn't worked. So in this, and what I want to talk about is that the fact that the strategy of no strategy uh, is actually the best strategy. Um, so, starting at one end, I would claim that the world is unpredictable. And, and you can start in a very large scale, uh, in, in, in the essence of... Um, th this, this is a, a, an asteroid, 2012 DA14. Anyone heard of it? No, neither did I before I did some research. This thing almost killed us. It passed by, there's no asteroid that's passed closer to Earth than this one. And if one of these rams into the Earth, it's a ma well, everyone's not going to die at the same time. Starting in a post event, right? Talking about death and we're all going to die. But anyway, that, that was close. It will affect the Earth enormously. Uh, it, it was discovered by an amateur. And when it was discovered, it was... It has passed, and it was 4.3 million kilometers away from Earth when this amateur discovered it. And then NASA and everyone else just said, oh, yeah, right, it is there. So, I mean, starting in one end, yes, the world is unpredictable. We know that. But if we net that down to business, what we in, I would say that the, the way to interpret that into, or way to put it into the, to, uh, to business is that the rules are constantly changing. And it is. And there are many examples of that, where you look upon that the rules are constantly changing. Uh, and what I would say also that we told that success is based upon uh, true strategies and execute on the strategies. But the fact is that rules are constantly changing. And if you look upon a few examples, of that the rules are constantly changing. Uh, Absolute Vodka, taking something that everyone kind of refers to. You know the Swedish brand Absolute Vodka. Um, that was hovering around fairly small volumes uh, and then uh, made it through into US. Uh, got a huge success in, in, in New York and then spread around and, and now it is uh, one of the largest, if not the largest vodka brand in the world. And it was not that it was a superior product, it was a marketing thing. Everyone can agree upon that. They did the smart thing in the marketing thing. So if you ask, 
uh, Michael Rowe, uh, who was the uh, marketing manager at that point, behind that. Uh, and this is a few years ago. So in the beginning, he had some smart answers to why this happened, what they did, what they thought about. But more and more over the years, he's come into the situation where his answer is, I don't know. Uh, I've tried it again. He's been hired for other brands, tried to mimic it, tried to do it again, but failed. Uh, so at this point, he said, I, I, we were there. We were lucky. We were there at the, at, at the right point, at the right time, with the right message, and then it took off. We were lucky. And I would claim that that is, for every of these huge successes, breakthrough ideas, at some point, someone got lucky. At some point, someone met someone, or they were by coincidence found out certain things, or were in the right spot at the right, right time. Because the rules are constantly changing, and it's, I would even say that it's pure luck. Maybe it's a little bit over-exaggeration, but it's a matter, you can look upon that. If you, if you listen to these guys that have my big things, uh, at one point, they would say they got lucky or it was a coincidence. There's, there's the re reversed uh, way of looking at it also, and to confirm that the rules are constantly changing. Um, Nokia, we all know Nokia case, uh, it's been quite often uh, referred to. They were at the peak when they were the best. They had the global distribution, uh, there were no one questioning. They had all the bright people, they know everything about mobiles. They were in, in, in the entire market. Uh, experts were writing saying that Nokia will be at this peak for 10 years, uh, and then they missed the, uh, the mobile, the smartphone thing. Was that because they were stupid, arrogant? Or were they just the fact that they, the rules are constantly changing and they missed that train? I would say they're not stupid. They had all the, expert, uh, all the, all the knowledge. Experts were, we couldn't see this happening. And also, when we look at Apple and their success of it, experts didn't know that either. They were writing that Apple will never make it. This was uh, a distribution of mobile phones. It's not possible. Uh, uh, they will never make it through this. And they did. So experts is not to rely on either. Because the rules are constantly changing and it's impossible to foresee. Nokia were not stupid. They just missed it. Because the rules are constantly changing. Yeah? So when I say that... Uh, you cannot repeat success. Uh, I mean, you can argue, yes, there are brands, there are, but in order to do new innovative stuff. One interesting fact is also that Stephen King, many of you know Stephen King, the, the author, it's books, or things, yeah, yeah right? Stephen King's. He's written um, 49 novels, all of them, all of them have been New York uh, uh, Times bestseller that list the official bestseller list. Uh, but he did, a t uh, he did a trial and, and he wrote four books under a pseudonym, Richard Bachman. He took the same recipe. I mean, if you read one of, of uh, Stephen King's books, you kind of read them all. Uh, if you read the more than two or three of them, you realize that this is just the same recipe. All the things coming back and hard to mix them up, etc. But uh, again, so he did that under a pseudonym. And that, exactly the same book, didn't make it at all until someone discovered and found out that it was Stephen King's uh, uh, pseudonym, then it made it to the top. So, of course, brand is something where you can repeat the success, like Stephen King, but it's repeating something over and over again. It's not a breakthrough ID to write another Stephen King book. He's just managed to get up there in a successful uh, concept, uh, which is brand is strong. So, inventing new things you have to take into consideration that the rules are constantly changing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if there were, you can also twist it. I'm trying to argue, uh, uh, I don't know if you agree with me or not, but I'm trying to argue for it again, uh, that if the fact that the rules are constantly changing and, and it is luck, but if there were a recipe for success, well, then we wouldn't sit here, right? then we all would be millionaires. If we all could, and if there were a recipe, a strategy for how to become a millionaire, then 
we would all do it, right? But it doesn't work that way. There could be, for a limited period of time, there could be a, a window of opportunity, as it's called. Here's a window of opportunity. One example is, um, back 10 years ago, perhaps, the uh, one quite good recipe for success were to go to a law firm in the US. Just get your, your, your grades good enough, go into the law school, get out of law school, get into a lawyer firm, start as junior, work your, just ensure you don't have a girlfriend, boyfriend, or any life at all, just work 24 hours, seven days a week, and then you become a senior and junior partner and partner, and then you're home safe. That was a recep uh, recipe that worked. But, again, for a long period of time, or a little bit longer period of time, that, that window is closed. As it is today, that's not a recipe for success anymore. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you go out of law, law school today in, in, in the US, uh, hard to get a job uh, at all, because the internet is taking over the services, uh, in a, their supply, there's too many people that want to do that. And now, nowadays you don't go to partners, there are different grades, which means that you work equally hard, but you don't get paid that much. So it adjusts, because the rules are constantly changing. I think you're getting it, right? Even though they came late. And, uh, are you twittering about this? No, you're just checking emails. Yeah, I was not supposed to pick on you. I was supposed to pick on. See, you can't see me all the time, right? If I stand in the middle, okay. Is this disturbing or is it? Because I can't, yeah. anyway. He saved you, they're over there, yeah, right. So, all right. If you're twittering, say, some pos yeah, say something positive. I can, yeah. Anyone tweeting? Anyone on Twitter? Are you? Right. Have you started? No. No, you haven't. No. Oh, you're going to... Yeah. Oh, you're good looking. Yeah, you got scarves and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Looks smarter than the others, but... <laughs> yeah, don't tell them. Yeah. Okay. So, let's see. Where were we? Um. Okay. So, so, if I say that... Success is pure luck. It's a little bit over-exaggerated, but okay, it's, it's a coincidence. It's something like that. But why is it that we're sitting and listen to these uh, master entrepreneurs, rich people, uh, about why do we sit there and trying to figure out the recipe? What did they do? How do I take this back home? Uh, I, I want to do that also. I, I'm going to start a website where you can, where people can meet up, you know, uh, singles, you know, a dating site. Maybe not the most innovative idea at this point, but you know, we're trying to do that all the time. So let, let's look at one thing, um, one well, slightly different thing. This rock, paper, scissor. Everyone knows that? Yeah. What's your name? Julanta. Good. May I interrupt you in your mailing and chatting and, and those things? Could you, could you just, uh, you know this game? Yes. Yeah. If I were, uh, where is Agne? Do you, you're there, good. Do you have any money? <laughs> <laughs> like just a 10, hi Vidas, how are you doing? Oh, good. You don't? 200 liters, oh that's too much. Do you have 10 liters? No. <laughs> you have 10 liters, oh look at that, that's, that's good. Vidas will pay you later. Yeah. <laughs> That's 10 liters, good. Um, you're still here, yeah, good. <laughs> See, uh, let's put that, uh, let's, let's do a bet, uh, and you can't lose. Uh, we'll put 10, 10 liters on the table there, and rock, paper, scissors. You know, you need to think now, are you good at this? More or less. More or less. Are you, is there anyone in here that would claim they're good at this? <laughs> because then we can, I mean, more or less, it's not very self-confident, you know. Anyone that claimed that they're all good? Sorry, you can go and sit down. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Yulanta. It's your 10 liters also. What's your name? Carlos. Carlos. Oh, good, Carlos. Close. Close enough. Oh, what's that? Carlos. Car Carolis. 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 There you have it. Carolis. Okay. You're good at this. Perfect. Because I'm, I'm really good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You read some strategies about this? Yeah, a little. A little. Okay, good. This is perfect, okay. I got a strategy also, so think of your strategy now, okay? Should we do it best of three or, or just one? Best of three. Best of three, on three. Yeah. Not after three, on three. This will take some time, yeah, right? Anyway, <laughs> so, one, 
two, three. One, three. <laughs> oh, you do scissor paper doll, do you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, rook is for beginners, as we know. Yeah, okay. So it's one. Uh, okay. See, <laughs> it's like the American Cup sailing, right? You, you, you follow. Right, anyway, it's it's, yeah. the, it's the last one. It was yesterday. That was today. You get your 10 liters back. <laughs> but Carlos, it's impressive. It's impressive how you, and now sorry, I'm, now I'm gonna pick on you a little bit. It's impressive that you actually have a strategy for something that's completely random. <laughs> it's interesting because we want it. I wanted to win those 10 liters. I was thinking, what would he do? What would I do? Let's take the... And I said, the funny thing is, you've read the strategy. You've read this book. Now, this is not prepared. I promise you. Carlos, you're best. I love you that you're up here. Good. There are official strategy book for rock, paper, scissors. This thick. It's around you. And as I said there, there is a, a paper doll, which is uh, scissor, scissor, paper which means that then cut, cut, paper. That's one strategy. Uh, uh, rock is for beginners or rookies. Rock is for rookies. Rock is rookies. It's hard to say. Rock for beginners. Uh, you, beginner starts with a, with, a, with a rock. You shouldn't do that. But on the other hand, a paper scissor doll will lose against that. How does that work? Well, then, How can it be that we want to have a strategy for something that's completely random? Because we want to. The <laughs> Exactly, you can tweet about that. There is a world championship, it's something that's completely random. You cannot be good at this. Sorry to say, you cannot be good at this. It's only luck. But, but we want to. We want to have strategy. We want some structure in order. We want to see how things are. We want to figure out how this trillionaire driving out in an extremely big car, we want to understand the strategy. That's a part built into us. I know it myself. I mean. That's, that's really what we want. Um, so, let's see uh, more about this. That was good. Uh, oh, it crashed. Uh, have you updated to the iOS 7? Anyone? Oh, yeah, right. Uh, you like Androids, yes. You're software developers. You're not, you're not a bunch of marketing guys. You do hardcore. Uh, <coughs> there will be a DOS-based... Uh, Nokia coming out soon, which is <laughs> going to be for, for old people like me, where you can do C colon. Yeah. Um, good. Mm? There, there is, there, there is well, just a little bit of a sidetrack. There is, however, uh, how many are single in here? <laughs> you don't dare to raise your hand, I understand that, but okay, it's, 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 it's no importance. I mean, we can skip that question if it's hard. <laughs> Is this a married couple, whatever? If there's no one single in here. Oh, there's, there's two. Good of you. <laughs> Thank you for coming, oh, not coming out, but uh, you know, uh, being official with your single status, yeah, maybe. This is not a hunting ground, this is a conference, I can see that, but anyway. In love, we are okay with having quite a random. I would, I would say, someone says that, well, the most important decision you do is when you select your partner. Or in my case, I couldn't select, I had to take the one that wanted me. So, uh, but I'm not bitter in that sense. But anyway, it, it, it is, then we can accept randomness. Love is random, that's beautiful. In a bar, you can go in and you, uh, I mean, it's random and it's, more or less the most important decision you take. And we don't have any strategy, or very little strategy, and we accept randomness. A little bit of a sidetrack, but anyway. So, we do want order, we want to understand the strategy. But if you then build that into that the <coughs> rules are constantly changing, there is an unmatch here. There's something that doesn't fit. Uh, when I do a uh, five-year plan, uh, of a project or whatever, in, in how we're going to reach the breakthrough ID, well, it's quite a given that 
in five years, things will be changing. So that won't work. Um, so what do we do? What is the recipe for this then? Are we just going to walk around like happy faces and see when it falls over you? No, of course not. The recipe is to expose yourself for coincidence. Intersections is another fancy word. How you achieve yourself or expose yourself for intersections and coincidence. And that's why these guys that are entrepreneurs, typically, you know, you see in front of you the entrepreneurs or the guys that are successful, they are outspoken, they are all over, they are energetic, they work like hell. And they're talking to everyone and whatever. I, I met an entrepreneur down in my community or a neighborhood where I live, uh, and he said, yeah, great. I think, I think there is, he's, he's hyper, he's, he's all over. Uh, and he sent a mail to me uh, and said, I, I think it's a great idea. I think there's a lot of people in this neighborhood that has a gr lot of great ideas. Let's gather, uh, I don't know where, but somewhere, and everyone can present five minutes a good idea. What do you think? And I was just, uh, uh, maybe I wait a little bit with that email, but uh, okay, so I haven't replied yet, and it's two days ago, and he's still waiting, you know, like this. That's an entrepreneur in his essence, because constantly exposing themselves for coincidence and intersections. So, I mean, we can learn from that. And, and I'm getting into that. How can a, a, a small company um, or a larger company then take lessons of that and get into what would be called an innovation process? But I would say this is to expose yourself for coincidence. That's where things are grown. It is not a five-year plan or a strategy. It's not even a one-year plan. In ad form where we work, we kind of came up with things are moving that fast. So we are just working in six months rhythms. There's no need to have a budget for 12 months because I, I happen to be the CFO also, among other things. Uh, and I mean, I, we don't know. In 12 months time, I don't have a clue. Well, I can have an ambition. I can basically know where we are. But sitting and doing detailed revenue forecasts for December next year, it doesn't work. So we do six months. We've scrapped budget. Uh, we just do some forecast. We're looking for that. Um, so intersections. And then try out new things. Maybe if you are out for innovative stuff and being that, maybe you shouldn't sit here. Maybe you should go to a, a, a knitting conference. That's perhaps to take a little bit, take it too far, but anyway to expose yourself and trying out new things. Uh, we call it uh, putting our bets. And in Adform, we've, we've, uh, we've come to that, just getting a terminology around this. And that people are, we are exposing ourselves for that. We do put our bets, which means that we have a term for it, which we also then can accept failure. Because in a strategy, long-term strategy, failures is just a, then, then if things doesn't go as it planned, it's a failure. But if you work more after this principle, which is then tying in a little bit more to agile development that I will come to, to, to in a, mo a moment, then it's okay to fail. We put our bet, didn't work. Okay, then we'll go on to the next one. If you have that and building that into it, it is not easy, and I'm getting to that a little bit later, in a big company, and, and especially like IBM that I worked for, yeah, right. Uh, putting our bets, it's not what you do. Mats, you execute on the plan. Yeah, but uh, what if the plan is wrong? Mats, stop asking those questions. There is no need to question the plan. A plan is a plan. Oh, yeah, you smart little asshole. Uh, I didn't tell him that. I didn't do that. But, you know, I felt for it. In IBM, it's power and control, execution, do the plan. And whoever wrote the plan can never be questioned. But the fact is that sometimes I was asked to jump like three and three meters uh, 50. And when I tried to point that out, that that's the world record and no one's jumping higher than two and a half, I was negative and I wasn't part of the solution. And the plan is the plan, start executing. So of course it is hard in one company like that. But what also IBM is suffering from is that they don't have any innovation. There is no innovation, it's killed. Apple, on the other hand, are able to do that. Apple have like 90% uh, like of their things doesn't come out. They have a failure rate of 90%. They have a process which is big. They do 10 things that they test and they want to try it out and they do that all of the, all of the, about 90% of it will never make it to the market. 
put in their bets trying to evaluate. So let's see. There are more examples of this where you can see that coincidence and putting bets. Spotify, you know, Spotify, music, yeah. Um, the um, Daniel Ek, Daniel Ek, Danielas uh, Ekas, would it be in uh, Lithuania, I think. Danielas Ekas, yeah. Um, he, he, he doesn't have 10, 15 years of experience in the music industry, no. Uh, he has not been in that at all. Uh, he didn't have any experience at all in that industry, but he came across these guys that do BitTorrent, uh, a way to download uh, big files, uh, Pirate Bay stuff and all those, and, uh, and figured out that that could be good for music. And then he tried it out in Sweden and it turned out to be a, a success, uh, and then they just kept on going. And I'm getting back to that, what they did, but the, they managed to prove it, that it worked, and then, as I'll say later on, they will go all in, which they did. Spotify is going all in, to put it mildly. They are all over there, running negative, and you know. And now he's talking like a priest, preached uh, that he's re changing the entire music industry, and maybe he is. But that wasn't his mission five years ago. This is something that's been built up. Rovio, you know, Angry Bird. Yeah, they do. I happen to work with the uh, chairman of the board uh, in that company, but that's, he's a complete crazy guy. But uh, he's, he's from Finland. But that's another story. I can take that over a beer. But. Um, the, the Rovio, uh, the, the, the Angry Bird, that was the 56th game they came out with. It wasn't the first one. They did 55 attempts that no one heard of. Then the 56th. And if you ask them, did you expect this to be a hit? I mean, for God's sake, it's a bird that you shoot the things. I mean, no one could expect that. But what they do is that no one can, no one can uh, argue against that. They go all in. Uh, I know I read an article. They are not going to open one or ten or 100 amusement parks in China, they're going to open a 1,000 amusement parks. And I know the chairman of the board there, I can hear him saying, do you know how many people there are in uh, China? A 1,000 amusement park. that's what we're going to open. <laughs> uh, when I worked in, in another company, it was in a financial software industry thing, he was on the same, in the same level there. And he had a classic start of, let's keep this in this room, it's a little bit confidential, but okay. Uh, uh, but it, but he, he, he had a, an option program uh, and he wanted to launch that, so he gathered, we were not more than 50 people or something. And he started off saying, I'm going to make you brutally rich. <laughs> I thought that was a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. We're going to get bigger than Microsoft. Well, then it fooled again a little bit, right? Um, I think my options uh, could have been worth up to 5,000 litas if we were. But if we were, if, if that company would have been greater than Microsoft, then I would be rich. But that didn't happen. So, uh, but anyway, he's now uh, owning 85% of Rovio. Uh, so uh, he's a lucky guy. Anyway, um, am I sounding bitter? A little bit, right? Can you still see me? Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah, yeah right. And you're tweeting? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you write? About the road? No, I told you. I told you it was a secret. <sighs> what did you write? Oh, I haven't actually posted it yet. No, good. Okay. Can I have 10? Yeah, uh, Agnes, the 100 liters, 200 liters. He's a journalist. We can pay him. That's right. They're all, they write whatever you want for money. No, this got sidetracked. Okay, good. What's your name? Arunas. I'm getting after you, Arunas. Anyway, cool, <laughs> come and get me. I need to tell another story. I like stories. Just about this coincidence, luck or whatever it is. Pfizer, you know the medical company Pfizer, in 1986, they were a relatively small American pharmaceutical company. Um, they start speculating in that if you can block an enzyme called, and I, now I read in, uh, PDE5, uh, and, and that would relieve, if, if you have angina, a form of chest pains, uh, it, it clogs your veins or something like that. They, they were speculating in an enzyme that, that could, could fix that. And they believed in it, uh, and, and, and they start doing. And you know, m the medicine industry, they, they, they test things on, on, uh, on mice, uh, one mouse, many mice, yeah? And then uh, monkeys, uh, students, people, in that, in that order. 
that's, that's how they test it, right? So there are students like, no, that didn't work, okay. So then, then we stopped that. Anyway, so they started testing this, and they came through and that passed. And, and then um, they, they had it out, and then half of them get placebo, and half of them get the, the... And they noticed that that doesn't often happen, or they would say never happens, that the test guys gets back to them and say, <clears throat> yeah, no, it's okay. Yeah, it's a, could, could I have some more? Uh, and they were surprised. It never happens. I mean, we want you to test that part, and now you want more. Need to figure out why. And uh, as it says in the report, they could conclude that uh, it was only men, uh, and typically middle-aged men, they were asking for more, and they suffered of, the, the bi-effect was sustainable erection. You don't need to quit Twitter about that, thank you. <laughs> this is a story just. So sustainable erection, that's what we know as uh, Viagra today. So Pfizer went from a small medium bi m m m pharmaceutical Midwest US company to one of the largest in the world with the best selling medical drug there is, Viagra. And it was not a five year plan. And in medical, it is definitely to try out things on a long cycle as you might know. But that was just a coincidence. Viagra, clogging their veins, scrap that, for God's sake. The students didn't react on it on the other hand. It's just middle-aged in the next phase. I don't know why. Uh, anyway, sometimes I go off track. Yep, so try out new things. Put yourself in the situation where you, um, where you expose yourself for intersections and coincidence. Let's look at something else that is related to this uh, as I see it. So here's five cards. Uh, if, if every one of you uh, select one of them. Just one of them, right? That's easy enough, isn't it? Have you decided? Yeah. Oh, you have, okay. Didn't, was it hard? No, it was quite an easy process, wasn't it? Okay, so, so look at the, this one then, and I remember which one it was. And I would say, I can remove that. Okay. Yeah, the one you're thinking of. Did I? No. Is it still there? This number, yeah. Yeah, your card is gone. Yeah. yeah. Magic, right? No. Uh, you don't need to be smart. Journalist, if I, if I want you to, uh, Arunas, if I want you to speak, I will ask you, okay? <laughs> Let me keep them a little bit short, everyone. Yeah. We're having a very nice discussion here. Yes. What you're, it, it, it's gone, right? Yes. Yeah. Magic. <laughs> no, you're a smart girl. So, I mean, it is. <laughs> you work in a casino. Yeah. So, you can see that the trick is that all these cards, there is none of them there. Yeah. You saw that at me immediately. You're at the casino, okay. So, what would I mean by this? This simple example. Not that I'm a, a magician in any sense. It's the, what I would say, get the, ball, get the eyes off the ball. Uh, and that's what we suffer from in many of our companies where we're working. We're stuck in the processes. We're stuck in whatever development process it is, it's a long term, whatever it is, and we are transactionals. I mean, I don't know if you've reflected of that. How, many, how much time do we spend on emails, sending back and forth? We are stuck in our transactions, in our daily routines, in our daily works, and how do we expose ourselves to intersections or uh, coincidence with that? Well, the trick is to get the eyes off the ball, to try to expand your your site. And this is not easy. This is the trick. Because if you can, and you're aware of it, and, but, but the start is to be aware of it, but how do you, you get your eyes off the ball? Get and see the penguin passing by. This is, I don't know, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm love to ask questions, but uh, uh, since there are so many couples in here, or not couples, but people are married, or, or having, having uh, uh, boyfriends and girlfriends, how many have kids? See, yeah? I have two kids also. Uh, they don't look like this, really, but uh, nowadays, when we're sitting in front of the TV, I, we, we're four people in my family. Everyone is sitting with their mobile like this. And a laptop. Exactly. Did I take... No. Okay. I'm going to say God friendly now. I really, that was a good comment. And a laptop, which I get back to also a little bit later. But, so, get the eyes off the ball. See the penguin, because it might pass by, because it's all constantly changing, and it's a matter of grasping the, or, or getting, and getting the opportunities when they occur, yeah?
So, one thing that I, and, and I think we, uh, we, we are focused on in, in, uh, <clears throat> in, in ad form, is to create a drive. And this starts at the top. If, if it's not okay of management that people are failing, if it's not okay that we test out new things, if the management are not placing their bets and be honest about that, that we're trying this, we will see. We don't have a long-term strategy. No, we don't have a perfect organization for this. No, we don't know how many is going to work with this in two years' time or a half year's time. We're testing it. We will see. Let's do it together. If they don't do that, well then, no one else is going to do it in the company. So I think I'm not going to ask any questions around here, but I think some of you are nodding and thinking, yeah, right. The company that I'm working in is not really a company where we put our bets, that we expose ourselves for intersections or expose ourselves for a coincidence, and we do not get our hands or eyes off the ball. We're missing the penguin. This is creating drive. And that's another long speech I can give about how do you create that? What about leadership? What does it take for leaders to create drive? What about bonuses? Is that, does it work or not? Well, for those of you that, uh, well, there's not too many ad formers in here, but you know what our point is there, that bonuses doesn't work. I can, I can, I can uh, uh, give you a hint about a book, uh, a Swedish guy called Franz Johansson. He lives in New York. He wrote, uh, wrote a book about drive uh, that takes up that. Uh, I, I said it, it, it is 220 pages why I left IBM. <clears throat> it's a little bit American oriented, but it takes up this what creates people's drive. And he's completely smashing bonuses as being something that drives people or drive, uh, creates drive. But as I said, in the sake of time, uh, that's another little bit another story. But I'm passionate about this. Mm -hmm. um, values. How many of you, let's do like this. Uh, how many have uh, written values in your company? Someone, uh, you know, I don't have to ask questions, Brad. We have these values. Again, IBM example. Uh, I was a middle manager in IBM and I got a, 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 a <clears throat> 23 long pages uh, PowerPoint with the title, here are new core values, please distribute to your team. And, and, and the top value that's written down on that, clients first. And there is a reason why IBM says clients first in their top-down approach of core values. It's not a core value. It's not something that we call DNA of the companies because they want it to be that way. Because in IBM, it's not clients first. It is shareholder value, controlled. Then it is clients, and then it's employees. But why do that? It's a reason for it. It's a reason why you have this type of value. In this house, we don't kill people. There is a reason why you say that. And everyone reads in it. It's because someone got killed. So values are, I, 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 I don't like that. I don't like having management tell people what's our core values. It's far much more interesting to talk about norms. What is the norm in the company? Which means what do we do without thinking? A norm is, basic norm is breathing. You do that without thinking. Yeah, and, and uh, we say, we talk about the DNA of the company, which is more interesting to talk about a company's DNA, because then you kind of put into that sentence that this is not something we change by just sending a new PowerPoint and please distribute. That's what's interesting. What's in the DNA of a company? And if the DNA of the company is that you're innovative, if it's in the DNA that you're allowed to do mistakes, that you're allowed to put your bets, that you're allowed to say, I can do that, I can test that, let's try it. That you collectively can do that. But it starts at the top. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, does it make sense? Yes. It does? Yes. Okay. Am I going okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. I wouldn't dare to say. You have three years. I have three years. Oh, three yeses. Three yeses. I thought, I thought he's, she's from a casino in Kaunas, and she says, you got three years. <laughs> I don't, what are you going to do with me in three years? I've got three seconds to answer. Okay, okay. Three yeses. Good. Mm. Three years. I've got three years. Well, anyway, I, uh, sometimes I get distracted. 
So, oh, that was a big sight. Is it getting boring? Uh, should I talk faster? Anyway, so, now, so this, this is kind of where, I, as I said, over the years, this has at least come to an insight for me. Maybe it's obvious for you, but for me it is an insight that this is what creates and drives a company like Adform or any other company towards a better innovation process. By the way, the innovation is not a process, it's about what I've said here. Be able to put, put your bets and then expose yourself for those coincidences. Yeah. The waterfall method that I talked about earlier is definitely not suited for that, but ad agile development is. So, trying to tie into that, it's a requirement. In the software industry, if we want to develop something that we do believe can be a breakthrough ID or solve the problem, whatever it is, it is a requirement that agile development is underneath. Waterfall method will never solve that. I, when I worked at IBM, uh, I was a junior developer, came in there, and, and, uh, and this guy, the project manager, he was running the first version of Microsoft Project. I don't think they ever got that product to work properly, but uh, back then it was a buggy version and a very, very complicated thing, but he was ambitious, so he put every task in, into Microsoft Project, and he asked all the developers about estimates in this, all this waterfall method theory or, or method. Uh, and I, th I saw the opportunity to be junior, why don't I kind of give me a little bit of a slack and then I can overperform like hell. So I kind of get things that I thought would take a day, I said a month. Uh, because that, that, that tees up, even if I got two days, I will overexceed. I will be the king of the pops here. So I did that for all of it and, and it took a week for him to get everything into Power or Microsoft Project. And he came back and said, Matt, I, I read it, you're on the critical path on everything. You have delayed the project with two years. Uh, could you look into your estimates again? Mm, yeah, well, okay, I do that. So then, then I just came back, scrapped it to one or two days, get back, and they, they were back on track again. And he just, I didn't win on that. He just looked at me, are you crazy? Are you, have you any control of what you want to do? Now you said this long, now this big. I, you know, I was, I was on, on, a, on a little bit wrong path there. But again, all the projects were done like this. We release things every second year, approximately. Uh, and that doesn't work in the world we're living in, and given what I said earlier also. So agile development is definitely a prerequisite for this. So when you do the scrum, every, uh, every release, every sprint you do, every second week, yeah, of course, that can't be completely chaos, and that you do that every sprint is a new bet. Everyone does. Of course, there has to be a little bit of plan. But I question that, as it says in the manifesto for Agile, that you should review your, your plans every year. I think that's, that's too long. Sitting now in ad form and knowing what we're going to develop in a years from now, we don't do that. We don't spend time on that. We have a six-month cycle again, themes what we develop, and then, of course, the sprints are supporting that. So, as I, as I said, you can't do everything at the same time. You cannot do, you know, testing everything. Every sprint is a new bet. No, you can't. There must be some plan in this. But the overall part of it must be that you're trying out things. And Agile is, and the way you're going to hear more, hear more about later on, is the constant feedback, the fast iteration, um, and so on. Yep. And then I, I asked marketing department, I, I, I think I've got really nice slides, I haven't done them myself, but uh, uh, very Justina, uh, she's a very good marketing person and, and she done that. And I, I wanted to get a picture which says uh, ad form and agile in the same picture and, and, and she gave me this. <laughs> and I don't get it, really, but I, I haven't told her. Well, the shoelaces, is anyone smarter than I am? Vidas, you're a smart guy. Why is there shoelaces that are tied together in agile? Because you need to go to small steps, or? But I, I don't know, I know what, you get, what you're thinking. I'm here to present, I'm not here to ask what my slides means, right? Uh, so, no, that's okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's a nice picture. No, no, <laughs> do you see that? No, I'll give you three a year. I'll give you, I'll give you three minutes, yeah. Okay, um, so, 
just uh, some shameless uh, promotion about Adform then. What do we do? We're an online, uh, we're doing online advertising, technology platform for online advertising. Uh, so we are putting our bets into certain buckets uh, where we want to be. Uh, and uh, one is this. It's an ad pages thing. This is, a, this is a, an example also that the rules are constantly changing and we don't know. We developed this two years ago and we thought that that would be a killer. Nothing happened. Uh, we had zero. There was no one. Because we were talking to advertisers and they were not, yeah, well, yeah, maybe good to have the catalog that you can browse within a banner, yeah, oh, well, maybe not. Didn't happen anything. It was about to go in the trash bin. Then we start talking to publishers, which means the, uh, the, yeah, the publishers, the media. Then it's suddenly in Norway. This would be, that's the greatest thing on earth. We need to have that many of those there. And we charge like hell for it. And suddenly this is a bestseller of earth in Norway. Did we see that? Was it part of a strategy? No. This was also something that was developed in one of our hackathon uh, or the FedEx days. How, uh, isn't that a nice story about FedEx? You know FedEx days? You develop whatever you want in 24 hours. Uh, FedEx came back and said, uh, we don't appreciate that you're using uh, FedEx name, so please uh, remove that. Isn't that one of the most stupid things you can do? Right? How many have experienced this? Is there anyone in here that have FedEx days in your company? Yeah, you're not allowed to call them FedEx anymore. Remember that. I mean, it's so stupid. So, they, so, so now it's called hackathon instead. So we do hackathon days. So anyway, this was something developed there. Interesting, yeah. But it didn't take off and uh, yeah, we did. It's a polite zoom. It means that when you hoover over it, it just zooms out a little bit. Holland, this is da shit in Holland. Hol Dutch sites, if you don't have polite zoom, you're out of it. So this, we sell like hell in Holland. Did we foresee that? Did we know it? No, but we exposed it. Then I would say in general, that's a lecture of itself, mobile, advertising, mobile, what, how will that work? No one knows. If there's anyone in here that would claim that they can say how advertising will work in mobile in two years from now, uh, I, I would say you're lying. Because it will, will it be in the app or will it be just a browser thing? Will it be that you get the phone for free and it's commercial every time you're going to call, you have to look to, through a video first in five minutes and then, yeah, right, at least I don't paying anything. No one knows. But we are for sure uh, doing, and, and here we place a lot of bets. We have 200 formats and swiping things and it's expanding, it's floating and it's even you know, moving like this and it can even make sound and, and all of that. Uh, which one is gonna be the winner? I don't know. We don't know. But we're constantly doing it and trying to be out there talking about it. And then also, who takes the decision about this? Clients or advertisers or, yeah, you know, mobile, but maybe we should do a billboard commercial instead or whatever. Anyway, that's another business that we're in. So that's, that's a bet we're putting. Uh, yeah, you can move this and, well, that's a game, I would say. It's not, we don't foresee that you can control the airplane sitting in the airplane connected on Norwegian's poor onboard internet and then steer the airplane. It's, it's a game. Yeah, but you got that. Then, Final thing that we want to mention that of kind of interest in the industry that we're in, uh, <clears throat> real-time bidding. Um, previously, or I would say up until for a few years ago, all online advertising were sold and, and handled exactly like offline. There were a media uh, that met up with a media agency, they had lunch and they decided about a two weeks campaign on certain media and then it ran, the campaign started and ran uh, based on our platform and then uh, ended and then they checked how many clicks there were, how many viewed it, or how many leads were coming out of it, etc. Now, which this is electronic and it's web, uh, it is just like the, that, like the stock exchange. Now it's moving into real-time bidding, which means that when you're getting into a web page, the web page sends an, a, a message to us saying, here's a user, whatever we know about it, would you like to buy that placement, one exposure? And then we kind of look through, is this a cookie we recognize? Could there be something of interest? Is this within the, 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 the media that we want to? And then we give an offer back and then decide who wins and then gets the, get the, the GIF picture or, or the, the, the banner sent over. So it is, it, whatever can be made electronic will be made electronic. It's just a matter of time. That's the, that's the world we're living in. So this will be, in maybe in two, three years time, 80% uh, of all 
online advertising will be according to this, at least the way we can see it now. But we don't know. We invest a lot in this because this takes computer powers. Just some, some benchmarks. We do a billion exposures per, per day. We get a billion questions to our, uh, our requests to our servers to, to show a banner. Uh, we do five or easy, blah, 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 blah. But the interesting thing is, as I see it, is that if you look at this graph, this is how many requests we get per second if we want to buy that in real-time bidding, uh, how much if we want to buy. So we get an average around a little bit over 100,000 per second. Do you want to buy? Do you want to buy? Do you want to buy? We have 120 milliseconds response time, including latency, which means that the transfer of it. So it's impossible to do this from uh, Europe to, uh, to Australia because speed of light will not fix it. So we have to be in Europe. And, and uh, we get about that. Uh, out of those, we do search and look through about almost a terabyte of data. Uh, so one billion transactions writes data every day. A billion is added every day. And we search through about a terabyte of data for each of these and see if there's someone that we are uh, looking for, uh, a cookie that we recognize, or a media, or something that we're interested in. Out of those, we bid on about 20,000, that's the yellow one, and the green one. Now, the, 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 uh, the scale makes it almost flat. That's the one we win. So out of the 100,000, we win down here. About two, 3,000. But that depends on our clients. During this hour, there were people trading. Depends on how narrow they put the, their requirements and what they want to buy, etc. This is a game-changing thing. This changed the industry. This changed the roles of it. How it's going to work completely in a year time, we don't know. But we're putting our bets into it. Investing in servers, people. What else is there? People and servers. Then you can do everything, right? Yeah. And some, and some food in between. Yeah and some sleep. Yep. Um, so, how much time is it? I'm almost there. Five minutes. Pinky, right? Yeah, correct. correct. Only number I know. Pinky, Isvikata. Um, and Poike. You can do that on Twitter. Poike. That's perfect, isn't it? Poike. Uh, I mean, the word Poike means perfect. Yes, thank you. So, That was it. The worlds are constantly changing. We're in an unpredictable world and we're all going to die. Any questions? <laughs> when are we going to die? You don't know. We don't know. Like the, that, like the film American Beauty said, uh, they say that this is the first day of the rest of your life. And that's true. Except the day you die. That wasn't a good end. I need to, I need to end more cheerfully in this. Agne, do you have any... Uh, was this okay? Brilliant, thank you. At least one thought it was brilliant. Any, any questions? Okay, I'm Matsonas Personas from Sweden. I thank you a lot. <laughs>